We're very excited to still be playing. Very much look forward to our trip to New York City and the NIT championship rounds at Madison Square Garden starting Tuesday with a very good opponent in George Washington. Uh, I watched uh, three or four of their games yesterday, and they're good. They have some transfers. They have some veteran players. They know how to play. They got strength inside, and uh, they can make threes. So it's what it should be, uh, two good teams that uh, will try to, in short, turn around, find up, Find out as much as you can about your opponent. I'm sure they've called every Mountain West coach out here, especially those that beat us, to find out what do we have to do. And we've done the same. So uh, looking forward to it. Our, our players are very excited. Uh, and I want to once again express my gratitude for all of, our, all of the fans who have made this a memorable experience and how they've come out and uh, really showcased our arena and our program with great pride. It does not go unnoticed and does not go unappreciated by any of us. So we salute our fans. I know not many will be able to, to travel out to New York, uh, but I know they'll be watching and listening. So help us get uh, two victories and come home with a NIT championship. Anything? Coach, Doc, go ahead. You talked a little bit last week about 2009. We talked about the parallels. Now it seems like it, you can really see the similarities, both being to the semifinal. Do you still feel that way, or do you see some of the differences between? Between our team and the 2009 team? Yeah. Um, we are similar but different uh, in a lot of ways. We were on the cusp of uh, saying this is an NCAA tournament team every year with them. We had grown used to it with six straight trips. So sometimes that can spoil everybody. And the nice thing was is disappointment faded, excitement seeped in from, from all of us. Uh, so right now we are elated that we're playing. We were back then. So from that standpoint, I think it's the same. Uh, we're better. And that's no disrespect for the group that we had. When we played in the NIT with that team, uh, played Baylor, and they were huge. And their size and length and strength was, was more than ours. So we were at a little bit of a competitive disadvantage we're not that way anymore. We can play big. We can play run and gun if we need to. We can guard in the post. And so I think we're better equipped from a talent standpoint. And again, that's no, not throwing rocks at, at the group that we had. They were really good. But I think we're, 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 we've grown who we are. And that, I like that also. When we went, we were determined to win to win the whole thing. That was our goal. We thought we were the best team. And we got beat. And we're going in this year with the confidence that we're the best team. And our goal is not to get beat, to be playing on Thursday and to win on Thursday. Coach, what are the benefits of the NIT? I mean, if you look back in history, in recent history, you know, some teams get to the, to the semifinals and will go on to the NCAA tournament the following year. Some, some don't. There's not really. Jury's kind of out on that, but what, you've been in it a couple of times. You've done well in it. What, what are the benefits carrying over? A lot depends, I think, on the state of your program going into it. Uh, for those that have always been on the cusp like we were, or for, for those trying to break into that exclusive club of the NCAA, that's where we were in 2009. We want to be a member. We want to have a car that gives us membership. Uh, then I think it has immense benefit in so many ways, uh, from exposure to recruiting to how you sell your what you're doing and how you've risen. Uh, 
if you are picked in the top ten in the country and, and, you, and you play in the NIT, people, you could win it, and they would label it a disappointment. Probably fans would. Uh, we are looking at it as an excitement that we have an opportunity to play five games, which is a great advantage. It's like taking a foreign trip. Uh, and when you win, that makes you believe you're going to win again. So I think if uh, what we've done, we, it's, we feel good about ourselves. Win or lose going in, it's been a benefit to us playing in it and winning three games and beating the people we had. Uh, and you can start with uh, Fort Wayne, who ran through their league and beat people who beat people that, that we couldn't beat. So, uh, and then you beat Washington, who was on the cusp of getting in the tournament, and Georgia Tech, who had, was red hot having beaten Virginia and Notre Dame. So those are, those are good wins. And I think that gives you feeling of confidence. Young guys that we have returning, having success, it says, I can do this. I, I like the experience. And first-time players like Jeremy and, and Zylan, we want to do it again, and we want to do it better. So we will turn it into a positive no matter what happens in New York for us. You mentioned, you know, a team that's top ten ends up in the NIT that even if they win it, it's labeled a disappointment. Did, did you feel like having been in the NCAA six straight times, if you had gotten the NIT and not gotten to New York, the season would have been labeled a disappointment? I I, I wouldn't have, I would not I would not have called it a disappointment. No. I mean from fans. Yeah, for, I, I think you have your passionate fans that if you're 18 and 0, they're, they're patting you on the back and telling you how great you are, and you're 0 and 18, they're doing the same thing. They're going to be there. Uh, you have some fans, it doesn't matter. They're going to be, they're going to find, they're going to be critical. I heard a fan at the game uh, on Wednesday, and I will not name who he refer, was referring to, but he bellowed out when nobody could hear, Pass the ball. Uh, sometimes, sometimes you hear this guy say, make a free throw. <laughs> like that we're trying to not make free throws and that we don't want to pass to open men. Uh, so you have, we have a bigger group of those that are, that are in love with our program. Uh, but we have a good group that says if they win, I'm going to be there cheering. If they don't, I'm probably going to be disappointed. And you have a few that are going to complain no matter what. And I think that's the way it is in a lot of places. I've been at other places. I, I label our fans as great Aztec fans who are appreciative, who have grown their expectations, which they should. I want them to. I want them to be disappointed. I want them to be demanding. I want, the, I want them to come. But I want them to say, we, we want to win. But I want them to be supportive when they know we're, we get grit and grind and effort and we're doing what we need to do to have a chance to win. And I think most of them feel that way. Last thing on this subject, um, obviously the first three games you played at home. Now you go into a very famous building. What are the benefits of, of having players play in you know, a semifinal situation, two games in, uh, in three days, in a building like that? on the other side of the country with media and, and all those things. Are there benefits from, from just getting to New York and playing in those games? It is. It's, a, it's an NCAA format, atmosphere, neutral site, uh, some of the same kinds of demands, although no, not quite as many. We've got a lot of things that we're, we're being asked to do when we get there uh, prior to our opening game. Uh, so I think it gives you a little bit of a flavor for what, you know, what we had last year in the six years that we went to the NCAA. Uh, quick turnaround to prepare for that next game, which is what you get in your conference tournament and the NCAA. So I think those are all helpful things. It takes us to an, uh, to an area where we seldom, if ever, go. And it will expose us to some neutral fans that are just basketball fans that if we perform, they'll say, I like that team. I'm going to follow that team. And all of a sudden, you've got a high school coach out there that says, it would be perfect for Joe. I'm going to call Fisher. Hey, this, my guy needs to get away from here. And that would be a good fit. 
So I think that I think the the residual of recruiting is also in the mix when you talk about that for people to see us. That got it. What are you going to be doing in New York? I'm sorry. What are you going to be doing in New York in your off time? Well, I made a dumb statement on Wednesday that I don't want repeated, so don't look it up and don't put it back up online. Uh, I'm going to be in my room watching film. I will walk down and, and go out and just stand and look at all the mass of people. We're at, the, we're at a hotel where all the teams will stay. It's a huge hotel, but it's right on Times Square. And that, you know, the, the hustle and bustle, we'll all feel it. We'll all feel it. Uh, Matt Sori, our, our, one of our coaches and got an assistant AD title, he's trying to put together a, a tour of the 9-11 site to where we can go in and, 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 and see. And they, they say that that's a wonderful thing to see, and, and we're going to try to get that arranged. Uh, but, I, you know, we're on a we're, – we say we're on a trip to win. We – we want to win. It's, we're on the company's dime. This is not a vacation. We're not going to off-Broadway or going to, you know, see some of those plays that, are, that have been there forever. Uh, we're, we want to go and win, and, and that's hopefully what will happen. Steve, this violates the one game at a time edict, but uh, you guys win and BYU wins. A uh, chance to rekindle that rivalry. Your thoughts on Yes, I'm good friends with Dave Rose. Our, our wives are good friends. Angie Fisher and Cheryl Rose are good friends. In fact, they text one another when we're playing. We, they text when they were playing their NIT game. Cheryl Rose, after they won, said, see you in New York. So, uh, yeah, that, 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 would be, that would be fun. But we want to we get there. And, I know they do, but I also know uh, uh, Valpo does. I had a phone message yesterday, I had a phone call yesterday that I didn't, take, didn't get from Homer Drew, the former Valpo coach, whose son is now coaching, whose other son is coaching at Baylor, and said, I'm really excited, look forward to seeing you in New York. So I'm, I've got, you know, you've done it, if you do it as long as, as I have, you have relationships and, and people you like and know, and I've known the Drew family since I was a high school coach. Uh, Homer was coaching back in Valparaiso, the dad at the time, and he's my age. And, uh, so it's, it, it's gonna be fun to play whoever we play. But there's a history with BYU, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Is there anything else you can tell us about George Washington? When you look at their statistics, they don't seem to do anything incredibly well. They're not top 10 in the country in any single statistic. It just seems they do a lot of things well, and they're one of the oldest, most veteran teams in the country. And what kind of challenges does that pose when you, when you see a team like that? You can't just say, well, we got to take that away. You, you've, looked, you've done research on this team. This is a team that you, you say, take away the post play from Larson inside 21 and, and, and 34, and they'll go someplace else. I watched. Uh, I watched their St. Joseph's game in the Atlantic 10 Conference Tournament. They made 11 threes in the first half. Uh, they went real small and played three small guards. And you start collapsing on the inside stuff, and, and they can do other things. So it's a point well taken. They are, they're, they're from a lot of different places. They got transfers from, from several places on that team. Uh, and they mix and match. and. They'll throw two different zones at us, and if we start getting going on something, and so this is a this will be an interesting game to see what they do to try to counteract out of the gate, and what we can do to to take away some stuff. I like their team; um, they're good. They they play smart. Uh, they they appear to be a very physical team the right way. They guard you and bump you and hit you without getting called for fouls. Uh, there seems to be a skirmish in every game they play because of they, they like that, you know, they, 
put your hand on you and you knock it away and they put their hand on you and you knock it away and vice versa and it, one of those it'll probably turn into a little bit of a chippy game out of the out of the gate and you no know, we'll we'll see that but they're well coached you know they were in the wooden legacy uh when we were there mm -hmm. and i was impressed with them when i saw them play there i thought they were well coached and and played really hard and, and were really versatile. 